I remember, oh, a number of years ago, I had someone on the program talking about x-rays. And he made the point that x-rays are cumulative. And the damage therein is cumulative. Nobody thinks about that. And I also did a story once, a program on how x-ray machines are not often and correctly calibrated. Uh, many of them are completely out of control in terms of the amount of, of radiation they they actually release and broadcast and push right through the patient. So it's not something you want to do. You want to avoid x-rays as much as you possibly can. Tell us a little bit more about this idea of external and internal exposure. Now, your point is they are essentially equivalent. No, uh, that that is the... Uh uh, I mean, that's point. not your, I'm sorry, that's not your point, but go ahead. I had it backwards. The nuclearists. Right. The nuclear industry. Uh, basically, they uh, originally, uh, uh, with uh, exposure to uh, nuclear weapons, the idea was that the most hazardous form of exposure was external radiation. That's right. Uh, radioactive material in the environment that was giving off gamma rays, which are similar to X-rays, except uh, they're more penetrating, mm-hmm. and that if uh, if you could uh, if you were getting safe doses from or if the dose was uh, low enough from external radiation that you wouldn't even have to worry about internal radiation. Mm-hmm. That was where it started. I and see. Now, 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 can I ask you to comment on that other thing uh, that has been floating around there? I call it a thing because it is kind of a monster. That a little radioactivity in your life is really good for you. That 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 is one of the nuttier things I've ever heard. Well, there is some evidence that within certain narrow uh, uh, ranges of exposure, there is some enhancement uh, or apparent enhancement in in health. But there's a tremendous debate as to exactly what's going on. And uh, what some people have hypothesized is that it's not the radiation that's good for you, but at very low levels, the body, all of a sudden, there's a place in, uh, in the range of exposure where all of a sudden the body's defenses get activated. And so it looks like there's a healthy response to the radiation. Yeah. But what it is, is this low level is just getting the systems that are trying to protect the body, it's activating them. So it might look like a healthy uh, effect, but basically what it is, it's the body help. I have so it, it, yeah, it pushes the immune system to a higher level of function, and people say, well, it's good for you. Well, actually, it's not, because it's the body working extra hard to try to protect itself. Right. And the one thing is that you can't control uh, a person's exposure to that very narrow band where there might be or appears to be uh, a beneficial effect. You can't say that, oh, all radiation in the environment, the low levels of radiation are good for you. But that's, once again, the, the uh, agenda that's trying to be sold for the mm-hmm. unsuspecting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned granite. Uh, granite has uh, its own inherent, uh, Mother Nature put it there, uh, radiation in it. I guess it's uranium. And granite counters are big business in this country and around the world. What are your feelings about granite countertops? Now, all granite is not created equal. Some is is able to emit more accounts per minute in terms of activity than others. But in general, uh, of course, the industry is fighting very hard to dismiss anyone's concerns as being irrelevant. Right. Um, You know, I don't have any information on that topic, and uh, I don't want to stick my neck out. because Uh, That's okay. That's fine. It's something to be uh, individually and independently researched. I've done quite a bit of, of looking into it. It's an interesting point. That uh, yeah. that ought to be, I think, made more readily available to consumers. But again, it's it's just not. The industry doesn't talk about it, but it's there. I know I've measured granite countertops that have uh, they're very active. In California, if you have a hundred counts per minute of identifiable uh, radioactivity, uh, the hazmat team comes in and the area is cordoned off and and all the rest of it. A uh, hundred counts per minute. I've measured counters that have 196 counts per minute just being emitted from the granite. 
So, you know, you wonder about that. That's interesting. Yeah. All right. Okay, back to your, your work, Paul, and, and what we need to know about how these uh, these nuclear nutcases say that internal and external radiation are identical. The internal, let's talk about internal exposure. Okay. And how that works. Uh, uh, this is a hot topic, which um, uh, the nuclear powers that be uh, flatly deny that low levels of internal contamination which is the ingestion of radioactive atoms into the body where they're not radiating from the outside, but they're radiating from the inside. Uh, the nuclear establishment does not ever acknowledge that this is a, a, a hazard. Their whole theory is based on that the, the total amount of energy that the body receives is the determiner of uh, biological effects. And as you get lower and lower, and, and you can see this at high doses, where people would get acute radiation syndrome, but there's no way that uh, uh, other than uh, mathematical, now this is, this is important, mathematical uh, uh, extrapolation from high dose effects to um, postulating what low dose effects is. This is what goes on in the radiation protection community. Even though there's tremendous amount of research all over the world on demonstrable low-dose effects, but these, once again, by the people that set the standards for safety, right. are ignored. So, um, so one, in, one, in, in, in one question, just a direct question to you. Hormesis is the term for a little radiation can be good for you. In Paul Zimmerman's mind, is any radiation safe, advisable, or beneficial to the human body? Well, we we live on a planet where we're receiving radiation. Let's call it out of the norm, out of the normal living cycle. Uh, I would suggest that one would not want any more than what one gets in the uh, normal living cycle because of the fact that there's not sufficient understanding of exactly uh, uh, the genetic effect. That uh, theoretically, one can postulate that uh, 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 a single alpha particle can disrupt or garble the whole DNA inside a cell. Mm -hmm. And so what's, uh, what effect that's going to have on health? Mm -hmm. is, uh, is a question open to scientific investigation. We, we, so yeah. I would not want to be wanting to take in any more alpha emitters than possible into my body, but once again, I'm doing it uh, naturally. But once again, I would limit exposure to the best of my ability. Uh -huh. Yeah. Bananas uh, have their own uh, innate uh, radiation. Uh, we get along fine eating bananas. Uh, kitty litter actually has a little bit of radiation in it. Uh, interestingly enough, it's slightly radioactive. And as I mentioned, granite uh, countertops, uh, you do a home improvement project, you, you're introducing a little bit of radioactivity into your home. So it is there, and it is a part of life. But what isn't a part of life is and are the emissions from Fukushima and every radioactive facility in the world, nuclear power plants or otherwise. They're, they're what, all uh, dangerous. Uh, what's important in terms of radiation exposure, as I said before, the radiation protection community says, well, it's the total amount of energy that's being deposited in the body that is the, the determiner of biological effects. But uh, there are other physicists radiation biologists who have come up with different points of view and suggest that it's, it's not just the energy, but it's the pattern of disruption within the body. Now, uh, external radiation is like, uh, pardon the expression, uh, being uh, shot by a shotgun, that the photons from uh, uh, radioactive material in the environment uh, uh, enters the human body, but the tracks in which it passes through the body are well dispersed. And so there's a, a less likelihood that two or more photons would hit the same DNA molecule 
within the same uh, limited period of time that could cause uh, a genetic effect. But in internal contamination, you've got particles that are dwelling in uh, areas of the body that, and they keep radiating, they keep shooting out energy and particles over time, over and over and over again to a small body of cells in their immediate vicinity. And so these cells become a target of an ongoing barrage right. of, of radiation. The radiation protection community ignores this fact in terms of the pattern of damage in the body. Because, well, no, it's just the energy. This is how we can determine effect. But when you're looking at low levels of internal radiation, it's the pattern of damage to individual cells that's going to be causing the biological effects. And this is why many people believe that low-level radiation can be hazardous to health. Now, one thing I'd there's two things I'd like to uh, uh, mention. Uh, the first of all, um, the radiation protection community does not acknowledge that uh, genetic damage can occur in uh, developing fetuses to cause uh, 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 birth defects in humans. And they justify that by uh, the results of uh, the uh, uh, study of the survivors of the bombing of Hiroshima. Uh, 